This is the video that is circulating to which I had to provide this response along the lines of he having answered his own question and the origin of the activity he so denounced. The answer and further expansion follows after the video. Thank God, thank God that wrote the Bible, or is it? King James, the British king, who is known for translating the Bible and is actually known to be the most authentic, the KJV, is also known to be one of the very instrumental personalities when it comes to slave trade. Yeah. He traded slaves. Mm -hmm. And everywhere he gathered and kept his slaves, he would name after himself. Jamestown. Does that yeah. ring a bell? Thanks it is bell. right here in Accra. Mm -hmm. There's a Jamestown in Jamaica. There's a Jamestown in America. It is also known that all the words in the scripture is inspired by God, mm -hmm. only written by men. Mm. And I came across a few verses in the Bible that makes me wonder. Sure, sure. A place like Exodus mm. 21, 2 to 6. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he is to serve you for six years. But in the oh. seventh year, he shall go free Does without paying like anything. God? If he comes alone, he is to go free alone. But if he has a wife, when he comes, she is to go with him. If his master gives him a wife and she bears him sons or daughters, uh -huh. the woman and her children shall belong to her master. Aye. And only the man shall go free. But if the servant declares, I love my master and my wife and my children, and do not want to go free, then his master must take him before the judges. He shall take him to the door or the doorpost and pierce his ear with an owl. Then he will be his servant for life. Leviticus 25, 44 to 46. Okay. Your male and female slaves yeah. are to come from the nations around you. From them you may buy slaves. You may also buy some of the temporary residents living among you God? and members of your clans born in your country, and they will become your property. You can bequeath them to your children as inherited property. You can make them slaves for life, but you must not rule over your fellow Israelites ruthlessly. Exodus 21. 20 to 21. Okay. Anyone who beats their male or female slave with a rod must be punished if the slave dies as a direct result. But they are not to be punished if the slave recovers after a day or two since the slave is their property. Exodus 21, 32. If the bulls gores a male or female slave, the owner must pay 30 shekels of silver to the master of the slave, and the bull is to be stoned Does to death. Sound like God. Ephesians 6 5. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear, and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Ephesians 6 9. And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. This cannot be Do not the threaten world. them, since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven and there is no favoritism with him. Damn. Colossians 4, 1. Masters, provide your slaves with what is right and fair because you know that you also have a master in heaven. Wow. Timothy 6, 1. All who are under the yoke of slavery should consider their masters worthy of full respect, so that God's name and our teaching may not be slandered. Colossians 3.22 Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything and do it, not only when their eye is on you and to carry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. First Peter 2.18 Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit it's yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, 
but also to those who are harsh. My question is, is this King James trying to control his slaves? Or is it God speaking? Perfectly valid response to his question he gave at the start. King James translated the Bible and that it is the best translation there is. Just one comment. The Israelites were enslaved in Egypt. Slavery is man's sin, not God's. But it is regulated by him and a picture of that greater slavery of all mankind to sin. See Genesis chapter 4 verse 7. It is clear that we often, if not always, present an issue that we don't fully understand nor are qualified to analyze. But mostly, it is not an issue at all. Then we proceed to tear God down and put ourselves in the driving seat, on the pedestal. Another amazing thing about us today is that in every other profession, and maybe it is not so much so these days, but, well, at some point, we would defer to the qualified or relevant professional when an issue arises to be tackled by them. Medicine, engineering, farming, teaching, driving. But when it comes to religion, theology, and the Bible, everyone is an expert. Now this is correct to an extent or basics that once illuminated by the Spirit, see Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10, you have the basics and can discern pretty much the true from false, like a baby who has all its bodily parts and functions and only needs to grow. But growing you must be taught, starting from Christ to his apostles and to the church elders. See John chapter 21 verse 15 and 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. This proves that Christ is the I am that I am, for he needn't teaching and all truth comes out from him, the almighty God. See John chapter 14 verse 16. I recall an article I read of a man about to respond to some verbal assault on the Bible and Christianity, but after some thought realized this same thing. But he put it like this, and I am paraphrasing man will always build a caricature or a scarecrow, then will, with pointing finger, denounce and ridicule their own invention as gods. After writing the response, the next step was to expand the position fully, not only about slavery, but about God and man in general. The approach is to do this under three headings, maybe four, after the relevant scripture text. Who are we to challenge God? See Romans chapter 9 verse 20. We are reminded that God does not need us. He can make himself another race from stones. See Luke chapter 3 verse 8. His grace is unearned by anyone through the gift of faith. Grace and truth are his hallmark. When he is hungry, he will not ask us, nor do we know how he governs his world or directs or lets the minds of the kings to his own glory. See 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7. By grace are we saved or preserved, for if he were to hide his face for a moment, chaos and anarchy will ensue. See Psalm 104 verse 29. He is greatness in himself. I am that I am. We have a beginning, our finite. We chase after healing medically by taking years to find a cure to diseases. Look at us, teeming human race. He opens, sends his spirit, and we conceive and bring forth. See Psalm 104, verse 30. We cannot or hardly control our passions without his restraints, the checks and balances he has put in place. Let all men keep silent before him and learn of him. Though he came once meek and lowly, he is terrible in judgment, and none shall escape his wrath on return. The evidences of God's greatness are all around us to see. The opening verses of Psalm 19 refers, yet we would ignore this and apply our own masterly point of view striding around like we own the world. What do we know about the deep, the thick forest, the mighty hills and deep ravines? We take his stone grind remold and build cities and we think we are great. Ask Nebuchadnezzar, he will tell you of his experience. Deep calleth unto deep, see Psalm 42, verse 7. The Leviathan, see Psalm 104, verse 26. The beasts of the sea all speak of his greatness and our smallness despite our privileges. The concept of knowing God is that of affinity or familiarity, like a son to a father or a brother to a sister. No man calls him Lord unless he has first drawn him, see John 6:44. I lived for a short while with others after my father passed away and I am grateful for their help and wish them nothing but good things for their deeds. However, they weren't my father, and we ended up having to go live alone. 
My mother came later, but still, it was a family unit. Regarding the issue of believing the word or obedience, by their fruit you shall know them. No man cometh unto the Father except by me, see John 14, 6. My sheep hear my voice, see John 10, 27. Those that are mine, I will in no wise cast out, see John 6, 37, and there are many more scriptures to process. That which we lost in the Garden of Eden when we were driven out, Christ the last Adam restored, see 1 Corinthians 15:50. This restoration requires a confession and rebirth. Except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. See John 3.16. It is a question of kinship. Christ is a friend, a master too, that sticketh closer than a brother. See Proverbs 18.24. So if we are not his, we cannot hear nor begin to understand him. This lack of understanding on our part is willful and cannot be blamed on God. We are fully and utterly responsible for our own sins and will be punished therefore, see Romans 1.20, unless we repent and believe and stop poking fun at his word, nor finding fault with him. Most chat groups have a no religion policy, granted, but for me it remains a good source of addressing the issues of the day. Thankfully, this one I'm on doesn't, but we as Christians must not have a closet or monkish mentality to this. Yes, if things get really banal, Flee, and we are to refrain from keeping company over much with the worldly. See 2 Corinthians 6, 14. But we should find a way to respond to attacks on the faith and make our views known when we encounter such statements of doubt. Because, let's face it, some of those on the group have some knowledge, like Kings Agrippa and Felix. Others have a conscience still, and we are to preach to all. Go ye into the world proclaiming Christ. See Mark 16, 15, as some did to us. The word came by diverse men. See 2 Chronicles 36, 15 Hebrews 1, 1, 2. Over 1,500 years it wasn't written by one man and translated into many languages in our age, though at the beginning a handful known of tongue, Greek and Latin. It is impossible to assimilate the word without prior recreation. We may pretend to have some initial light spirit, know the word from end to end. The devil quoted the word. See Luke 4, 10. And he knows it more than any. Yet the ingredient, the seed, is belief. See 2 Chronicles 20, 20. And from there, stem faith by grace, salvation, sanctification, and sleep. See 1 Thessalonians 4, 14. For this reason, men wrestle with understanding scripture to their hurt as they miss this mark. See Psalm 56, 5, 2 Peter 3, 16. To seek him first and his righteousness and all things shall be added. that all our waking hours were attributed to knowing God, learning of him. See Matthew 11, 29, and improving in knowledge, and we must challenge the gainsayer. See Titus 1, 9. Why are there so many false peddlers of the word today? In times gone by, there may have been as few believers as today, except for those special times of revival. For many are called, but few chosen. Church leaders will have so much to account for in this, and it is our prayer that they start to teach the congregation the whole counsel of God in its entirety. We must make this a day and night cry for the lands at least where there are churches, that they reverse their current practices and turn to their true calling of spreading Christ's word even as he did. He rebuked many false teachers in his day for their leading people astray and refusing with stiff neck to obey the pure truth of the word bringing in many heresies and complications to subvert and gain. There are those who use scripture to defraud and defend their actions with other scripture. See James chapter 2 verse 11. Hasten to add that knowledge of the body of divinity is paramount here. There is an undeniable set of doctrines that cover the main rules and edict of the word. If you haven't, please read Thomas Watson's book, A Body of Divinity. It's a comprehensive exposition of the Westminster Shorter Catechism, majoring on man's chief end. Scripture is the only rule for how we may enjoy and glorify God and God's nature, the Trinity, creation and providence, original sin and the fall, redemption, the Ten Commandments, the sacraments, and another of his works, a godly man's picture to get an understanding of the cohesive nature of the Bible. You cannot call yourself a Christian and seek divorce like the worldling does unless you are theirs. See 1 Corinthians 7, 39. Nor should you deny each other in marriage, do benevolence. See 1 Corinthians 7, 
three. If a pastor wouldn't stand down and clings to the pulpit despite incapacity, that is not scriptural. For Paul knew when to retire, see 2 Timothy 4, 7, and did not think God incapable of running his world without him. What arrogance. You cannot claim fairness and run the church like it is your personal chattel, paying lip service to accountability and forging false humility. We are all in God's hands, and he will not hold anyone guiltless in any of his requirements, whether of chasteness or keeping our tongue or maintaining our testimony. See Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. We will all pay for our misgivings, so let's repent while there is time, calling upon the Lord and sincerely seeking that he show us our shortcomings whether it be pointed out to us by another or our consciences, reveal it. Where the scripture speaks of separation for a time or for adultery, there is an expressed and implied request for return to the marital status and home. See Matthew chapter 19 verses 7 through 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 9 through 11. There are those who know doctrine and profess faith, but only apply doctrine as it suits them, willy-nilly, to serve their selfish or bigotry ends. If they are truly the Lord's, he will recompense them. But I encourage both, those who aren't his also, to read Jude until they can regurgitate it. Hopefully it is revealed to them the consequences that await. Know ye not that the scripture is of no private interpretation? See 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 20, And God is no respecter of persons. See Acts chapter 10, verse 34, that all will pay for their transgressions, whoever they may be. Also, beware of gifts taken, as this will compromise your judgment, no matter how small the gift. See 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 3, Psalm chapter 26, verse 10, Isaiah chapter 33, verse 15, and Amos chapter 5, verse 12. The hymn through all the changing scenes of life follows now. 